Not all superheroes can have a wonderfully crafted origin story like Batman's or Superman's. The truth is, many of the heroes that we see in modern day comics initially were presented with a pretty silly origin story, or no origin story at all, and became the victim of awkward retconning that seemed like a good idea at the time. Today we are taking a look at those less fortunate vigilantes with our list of the top 10 dumbest superhero origins you won't believe. Some of these origin stories are flat out dumb, while others seem like they were last minute ideas whipped up on a whim. So with that in mind, let's get to our list. Starting us off in at number 10, The Badger. Let's begin our list with one of the more obscure heroes to appear on our countdown today. We are talking Norbert Sykes, aka the Badger. Oh friends, it only gets worse from here. So our buddy Norbert is a Vietnam vet who was initially published by the very short lived Capital Comics. His rights then went to a publisher called First Comics and then after the 90s he was released by Dark Horse, Image and IDW. So yeah, he's been around a lot. Wonder why. First appearing in a self titled comic, Badger Issue 1 in 1983, this is a character who is an expert martial artist. And this is the best part, he can talk to animals. So how did he get that power? Well we should probably preface this by noting that he has multiple personality disorder, because one of his personalities believed he could talk to animals and that personality referred to itself as the badger. Oh, and it's also worth noting that this persona of his believed he saw God appear as a badger to him. Yeah, like I said, gets worse. Norbert escapes the mental asylum that he's in and becomes a vigilante based off of this. He's also got a ton of other personalities too, including a dog, a nine year old girl, a playboy, and an inner city black kid. So not only is this absurd, it's also a little bit offensive too. Now, I wasn't even the Silver Age, you guys. <laughs> well, actually, the more racially offensive age was the Golden Age. But. Up next, number nine. Defensor. The Defensor is another slightly obscure character, and he has a very obscure origin story to boot. Defensor first appeared in Marvel's Superhero Contest of Champions issue 1 in 1982. Before becoming a vigilante, he was a construction worker named Gabriel Carlo Dantes Sopulveda, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. Gabriel found an underground passageway that he snuck into after his superiors at his job had gone home for the day. They had previously told him to ignore his discovery. Super stubborn though, he entered and found that the cavern contained a suit of vibranium armor connected to an unknown machine. So what did Gabriel do? do? Well he put it on of course. And as soon as he did, things went to hell. He was attacked by a group of creatures and he fought his way back to the surface, and thus began his vigilante career. His death happened off panel in 1995, being reported in Captain America issue 442, so clearly wasn't all that important. Makes sense why he's obscure. Coming in at our next spot at number 8, Elongated Man. Ralph Dibney may be a more respected B tier superhero these days, but that is not something you'd assume based solely off of his origin story. How did he become a superhero? He drank soda. Not even kidding here. Dibney, a young regular dude who just so happened to be obsessed with circus performers, wanted to be like the contortionists and acrobats that he so dearly admired. So he did his research and asked around, and turns out the particular performers he questioned claimed that they drank a particular kind of carbonated beverage that helped them stay in top form. That soda was a drink called Gingold. So what does our pal Ralph do? Well he went out and bought as much Gingold as he could get his non-powered hands on, and he drank it. A lot of it, like an unsafe amount of it. And surprise, surprise, it actually worked, but gave him more than he bargained for. He had gained stretchy powers capable of elongating his body in any which way. Now, you're probably thinking this story has some obvious plot holes, right? Can anyone drink a bunch of pop and be granted superpowers? Definitely not. Really, he's lucky that he didn't gain a massive amount of cavities instead. And at number seven, we have Black Condor. There have been three Black Condors over the years, and all three haven't had great origin stories, but let's specifically look at the first, Richard Gray Jr. First appearing in Crack Comics issue one in 1940, Gray got his powers thanks to nuclear exposure from a radioactive meteor. Despite this, he personally believed that this wasn't actually the reason he had gotten powers. This is because he believed he was capable of flight because he had been raised as an orphan by a flock of wild condor birds in the wild. In the wilderness. Which yes, is very very dumb. When he did return to civilized society, he just happened upon the dead body of a senator named Thomas Wright. So he stole his identity because they shared an uncanny resemblance. How convenient. And yes, he led a double life as a senator while operating as a crime fighter. Yeah, you can see why this character has had so many different iterations. Although they never like quite got it right. <laughs> Up next at 6, Green Arrow. Green Arrow's initial origin story is so bad because it's laughable. 
And that's because it is literally a ripoff of another one of DC's more popular characters, Batman. First appearing in more fun comics issue 73 from 1941, DC was clearly trying to capitalize on the success of their cape crusader Batman by creating a similar hero. This hero was Oliver Queen. Queen was an orphan. Queen had a traumatic experience that inspired him to fight crime. Queen was a millionaire philanthropist playboy. Queen had an aero cave and an aero car and even a young ward. Spot the difference yet? Well, apparently Queen found himself on a deserted island one day and taught himself how to be an expert archer. This is literally the only difference between him and Bruce Wayne when you put it out on paper. Like Batman, but more Robin Hood. Luckily, Queen had become a more independent character in terms of his identity later on, having had a major overhaul and a neat little retcon in the 60s that mixed up his ideologies ditched his millionaire background, and turned him into a liberal man fighting for the people. Let's move on to another iconic DC character in at number 5, Catwoman. Oh yes, an iconic character the caliber of Catwoman can be victimized by a terribly wacky origin story just like any other hero. Selina Kyle first hit the scene in the early days of the Golden Age, appearing in Batman issue 1 from 1940, but she hadn't fully come into her own yet. During her debut, she was merely an expert thief who made use of disguises that made her appear like an innocent elderly woman. But how did she enter this glamorous life of crime and jewel thievery? Well, once upon a time, she was a flight attendant and during one fateful flight, the plane she was working on crashed. She suffered from amnesia as a result. And upon waking, what did she do? She decided that she should start a life of crime. That's a completely rational idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just be criminals. As for the whole cat part of her persona, she chose to adopt the mantle of the cat. She wouldn't be called Catwoman until later on. All due to her daddy dearest having owned a pet store in the past. As you can imagine, DC being the king of reboots and retcons eventually retconned this origin and replaced it with a brand new one in the 1980s after the character had made a comeback in the Silver Age. In our number 4 spot, Shauna the She-Devil. Shauna first appeared in a self-titled comic book in 1972. She is a well-trained veterinarian, an Olympic level athlete, experienced in combat and has extraordinary agility. She is also a highly sexually objectified character, but that is not why she landed on this list. Shauna witnessed the death of her mother. Her father murdered her mother. Yikes. She then moved from her home in Africa and came to the US to become an Olympic level athlete and a vet who specialized in raising leopard cubs. Here's where it gets really random. One of the cubs that she was raising was shot at by a zoo guard and feeling the need to protect wildlife better, she moved back to Africa to fight poachers. That's, that's it. It's kind of boring. Cool story. I can tell it again if you'd like. Coming in in our number 3 spot, we have Bouncing Boy. Oh, Bouncing Boy. Bouncing Boy is by far one of the silliest superheroes out there. He is a boy who has the power to inflate like a giant ball and of course, bounce around. It also gives him a certain extent of invulnerability. To be fair. He first appeared in Action Comics issue 276 in 1961, and he was a part of the Legion of Superheroes. Bouncing Boy aka Chuck Tane is largely thought to be a character created by Jerry Siegel as a means of reflecting Siegel's interest in comedy and a desire to have a vehicle for humor on that team. So how did Chuck get his powers? Well he was not born with them. And silly enough, he is the second individual on our list to gain powers from a beverage. No word of a lie, Chuck thought he was gulping down a delicious soda when in fact he had just consumed a super plastic formula. Whatever that is. He was first rejected by the Legion, but after defeating a robber, he was accepted onto the team's roster and became the Legion's self appointed, I quote, morale officer. Morale officer? I mean, like, morale, like, inspirer would make sense, but to be an officer is. Kind of seems like he's bouncing around being like, be happy, you know? Moving on to something even more ridiculous, in at number two, Firebrand. The Firebrand mantle has been held by two individuals, siblings Rod and Danette Riley. Rod Riley was a bored, wealthy socialite who decided he would fight crime alongside his manservant, donning a very flamboyant costume that consisted of a transparent shirt and tight red pants. Now, aside from being a bit of a latent queer superhero, Rod was pretty damn racist. His story had eventually been retconned, making him present at Pearl Harbor during its attack in World War II. So I guess it's justified racism? Ew. <laughs> no thanks. Danette, after finding out her brother was Firebrand, would state, I quote, What a confirmed bachelor playboy like my brother needed with a bodyguard I never understood. And even better, from the looks of these clothes, I didn't know my brother quite well as I thought I did. In other words, Sweetie, your brother's gay. Speaking of, her origin was a bit more absurd than her brother's. She was studying volcanoes north of Hawaii in the 40s when she was kidnapped by a sorcerer named Wotan. When she tried to escape, Wotan hit her with a magical blast that knocked her into a pit of lava, which then gave her the power to control heat and shoot fire blasts. Which 
you know, seems a little absurd because if one was to be thrown into a pit of lava, you would, you would die pretty quickly. Wouldn't be fun. But there is magic involved, so it's fine. And finally, in our number one spot, The Wizard. The Wizard, aka Robert Frank, is the product of the Golden Age, having initially been published by Marvel's predecessor, Timely Comics. First debuting in US Comics issue 1 in 1941, The Wizard not only has a silly name, his origin story is almost baffling. It's that bad. Born in St. Louis, Missouri, Robert Frank was a fellow who went on a trip to Africa with his father. That was where he was bitten by a cobra. An almost fatal bite, his father saved him at the last minute with a blood transfusion from a mongoose. Why? Apparently to counteract the poison. But because of this, Robert was given super speed abilities. Later on, writers tried to make more sense of this by saying that the mongoose blood actually triggered latent metahuman abilities. Yeah. Sure, right. That that makes way more sense. Totally. And that's why he fell into obscurity. All right, there we have it, friends. What other superheroes can you think of that have absolutely silly origin stories? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts and feels. If you guys dug this video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button, share it with a friend. And hey, if you haven't already, join, join, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> Join the Nerd Squad is what I want to say. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd and join the Nerd Squad. We'd love it if you stuck around more. In the meantime, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video.